The world is filled with a fear of death, with the onslaught of coronavirus. My dear people of God, there's a lot of responsibility on God's people. God says in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4, He says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. God is so much concerned about every soul. Because He says, all souls are mine. And every person who is dying every day, every person who is killed and is destroyed, his whole soul is going into the hellfire. And God is so concerned about that. He says that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. There is a more greater deadly virus than coronavirus, and that is the virus of sin. The sin is destroying every soul. The coronavirus is destroying just the physical body, but the virus of the sin is destroying the soul and putting that soul into the hellfire. And God says, my people, if they humble themselves, and seek my face and ask forgiveness of their sin, God says, I'll heal their land. And today, my people of God, the whole responsibility, the whole onus lies on us. As a people of God, what are we doing? How are our lives and what, what is happening to us? We have to just sit and examine ourselves because there's something dangerous that's going around and God is expecting His people to rise up to this occasion. He wants His people to become more humble. He wants His people to get away from every sin in their lives. He wants His people to seek His face and pray for the land so that He can send His healing power on these nations which are suffering. Yes, dear people of God, we as the children of God have more responsibility the church today, unfortunately, is getting compromised with the world. The world is entering into the churches. People are losing the fear of God and getting involved in sinful things. The lust of the world are getting into the church. But the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes in John chapter 16 and verse 8, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When the Holy Spirit comes, the first work that He does is He convicts us of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Today, we as a people of God are losing the conviction of sin. We are getting easily entangled into the sinful aspects of this world. The church needs to be changed. The world is lying in ruins and people are going into the hellfire and God is looking at His people. So we have to repent. Today we as God's people, we need to repent from all our sins. The Bible says, do not love the world, neither the things of the world, because if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We need to stop loving this world. Because as the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, in verse 16 it says, Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of flesh is destroying the church. The lust of the eyes is destroying the church. And the pride of the life is destroying the church. And church, we need to realize these things. We have to repent from all our evil ways, from all our sinful life. And look to God for the healing. Because God is a holy God. Without holiness, no man can see God. Jesus came into this world. He died for us. He died for our sins. 
He didn't die for our sins that we should keep continuing in sin. He died for our sins that we should die to sin and live for righteousness. That was his purpose. But today we are taking the blood of Jesus into our hands. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let us repent. Ask God the forgiveness and tell Father, I repent Father, please help me. I don't want to continue in sin. I want to get out of my sinful life. Yes, people of God, we need to change. We need to repent because sin will not spare anybody. Even an ordinary believer, even he may be a, a, a servant of God, I may be a pastor, I may be an evangelist, I may be doing God's work for many, many years, but if I'm not getting away from the sinful aspects, if I'm continuing in sin, if I'm not setting my relationship with God in a right way, I'm lost. Because I may do miracles, I may have gifts, but if I don't depart from iniquity, if I don't depart from sin, I cannot stand before the presence of God on that judgment day. Yes, we all need to repent. This world is coming closer, closer, closer to the end. And God is looking at his people. It's just a humble prayer, but we all realize it because when the Holy Spirit comes, it convicts us of sin. Where is the conviction of sin? He convicts us of righteousness. Where is the conviction of righteousness? He convicts us of judgment. Where is the conviction of judgment? Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. But unfortunately, we are seeking other things, the things of the world. Yes, today, let us pray, God, help me. I'm not a, I'm, maybe I'm not a big preacher, but what I understand from God's word, I'm just sharing it with all of you. Yes, this world needs Jesus. And the world needs Jesus, the healer, the savior, and the deliverer. Not just from, this, from their diseases, but also from their sins. Because sin, the wages of sin is death. And we need that deliverance as well. Let the salvation, the righteousness spring up together as it says in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 8. So this is my prayer that we all realize what God is expecting from our lives. We'll all join together and surrender to God and ask forgiveness from God. Father, heal the land, heal this world. God says, if my people, they humble themselves and seek my face and repent from all their wicked ways, God says, I will heal. So let us pray to God. Let us ask God His grace upon our lives and let Lord do this mighty work in all of our lives. May God help us.